So of the two types of reproduction, we've already discussed asexual reproduction. Now let's take a look at sexual reproduction, where sperm and egg actually meet. Let's look at the process that leads to sex. You'll recall in mitosis, it was simple cell division. So we can have a cell go through mitosis. It's going to make an exact copy of itself. And that happens over and over and over again. This is something we call growth. Growth by means of mitosis. So we can go from one single cell to trillions and trillions of cells. Now, in sexual reproduction, we know that sperm and egg are going to come together. So here are some sperm, here are some eggs. Sperm and egg come together. That's sex. So fertilization has taken place. Now, here's the interesting part. We know that we have how many chromosomes in each one of our cells? Well, there are 46. So if I take 46 and add them to 46, I'm going to have 46 plus 46, carry one minus two, 92 chromosomes. That's too many chromosomes. That just doesn't work. So there's another, there's another process here that has to occur in order to get to this thing we call a sperm or this thing we call an egg. And that new process is meiosis. So meiotic divisions, going through meiosis to create sperm and egg. So meiosis is a topic for today. Let's take a look. So different organisms have different numbers of chromosomes in their nucleus. For example, humans, we mentioned before, have 46 chromosomes. A turkey has 82 chromosomes. So obviously the number of chromosomes does not indicate intelligence. Turkeys are not very bright. We call this complete set of chromosomes the diploid condition the diploid condition. So humans have 46, turkey has 82, a mosquito has six. I need to reduce by half the number of chromosomes. If I'm gonna to join together two cells to make one new organism, I need to reduce by one half the number of chromosomes. And so what we call that then is the haploid condition. This is known as being haploid. When I reduce by one half the number of chromosomes, that is haploid. So haploid for the human would be 23, Haploid for the turkey would be 41. Uh, you guys can do the math. So to put it really simply, in mitosis, we talked about DAS, duplication, alignment, separation. Well, in meiosis, we have another separation. In fact, we can actually go with DAS-ass. So I have duplication, alignment, separation, and then another alignment and separation. So here's the process. Once again, we start with a cell with four chromosomes. We have two pairs, homologous pairs of chromosomes. So on each of my homologous pairs, they code for the same trait once again. We have a nuclear membrane still, so the first step that has to happen now is for duplication to occur. So each of the chromosomes duplicate and I form my sister chromatids. Here they are looking like X's. They're joined together at the centromere. The nuclear membrane begins to break down. After duplication comes alignment. So here's where it's different than in mitosis. In alignment, for our first alignment, the homologous pairs of chromosomes line up side by side. Homologous pairs of chromosomes line up side by side. From that point on, then we have separation. What separates then in the first meiotic division? The homologous pairs are gonna separate in, my, in the first meiotic division. So one of the pairs goes in one direction, the other of the pairs goes in the opposite direction. After that, then we divide up our cytoplasm and we have two cells now, each with one of the homologous pairs. So I end up with two cells with basically two chromosomes two chromosomes in each one of these cells. Yes, they have twice the genetic material, but really, it, they're just two chromosomes. I've lost the pair. The pairs have separated at this point. Now we go through alignment once again. In this alignment then, our second alignment in meiosis, we have our sister chromatids lining up end to end. And this looks just like mitosis. Finally, we separate. And now at this point in this second separation, our sister chromatids are gonna separate just as did as we did in mitosis. We divide up the cell and we end up with four new cells. Four new cells, each of them are different. These four new cells contain just two chromosomes. We started once again over here with four chromosomes and now these cells have two chromosomes each half the number they started with. This is the haploid condition.
So big picture here for meiosis, we have duplication, alignment, separation, and then alignment and separation again. So we have a first division and then a second division. Once again, the homologous pairs line up side by side in our first division. They are what separates and the sister chromatids line up end to end in the second separation and the sister chromatids then separate in that division. We end up with then four new cells. Now, if you're a female going through meiosis, you end up with, you guessed it, four eggs. If you're a male going through meiosis, you end up with four sperm. Here's another slide showing the same summary. We have meiosis one and then meiosis two. This condition, once again, where I have a full complement of chromosomes, is the diploid condition, also known as 2N, where I have just two or half the number of chromosomes, I should say, half the number of chromosomes. This is the haploid condition, or what we call 1N. So that's meiosis. Now remember, meiosis leads to sex. It, in and of itself, is not sex. Meiosis just leads to the cells that have half the number of chromosomes so that when they join together, we go back to the diploid condition. So meiosis produces that haploid condition. Sex then returns the cell to the diploid condition.